Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Tuesday, October 22nd at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Take a look at the GFS models. Heavy snow coming into North America. The system changes this week. Here's your Friday. Here's your Saturday. And then by Monday, the snow will drop and cover. Everything north of 40 degrees, basically. Keep calm, it's boom time. Here's your total snowfall map. Snow showing as far south as the southern Rockies down here in my region. But that's all. Some heavy snow over a half a meter, as we predicted, sitting on the ground up here in British Columbia. And some significant snow on the Mani uh, Alberta, B.C. boundary there. Let's check out the forecast through Monday, October 22nd, Tuesday, October 22nd, I should say. The weather pattern on Monday and Tuesday will favor cold air and snowfall in B.C. Just east of the divide in the U.S., including eastern Idaho, western Montana, parts of Wyoming, and Colorado. There's the circle in question. And later in the week, the weather pattern will not change much as snow will favor the eastern mountains of Montana, Idaho, Colorado. Also, southeast Alaska is going to get back in on the... Take a look at those totals up there. That's up in the four, five, six foot range. And the pattern for later in the week is continued to cool to dip all the way down into Texas and move east. This is one of the meridional flows that are going to drop those freezing temps all the way down into Mexico. The main change, the cold air will be shifting back just a bit. Lower temperatures and likely bring snowfall to Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado later in the week as well. Denver weather, snow likely to cause hazardous travel along the Front Range Wednesday night and Thursday morning. Residents of Castle Rock could see up to 8 inches. Heads up, Castle Rock. Now let's talk about cloud seeding. And let's talk about some epic five-day forecast. Majestic heli ski, 37 inches over the next five days. Bella Coola heli sports at 29. Heavy totals. Now let's talk about cloud seeding. And a lot of you think I don't believe in geoengineering, but geoengineering is not a belief. It's been happening for decades. And... The whole idea of chemtrails and planes and contrail and cloud nucleation is just people spewing nonsense out of their mouth. There are different types of geoengineering, and chemtrailing is not one of them. But cloud seeding is, and this is when you chemtrail silver iodide particles into the clouds using rockets, not commercial airlines. <laughs> There are many ways to get these particulates up. You can dump them up in the cloud. You can shoot them up there. You can explode them in the cloud. But now, even cloud seeding has no proof in its efficacy whatsoever. All the papers that Lee and I have read show that there it's almost like global warming. It's impossible to prove an effect, yet they continue to still do it at a cost of up to a quarter of a million dollars per ski area. And what they say here is that seeding can add no snow during some storms and may add as much as 10 or 20% during some storms. Depending on how much bullshit we put into the paper. Here's the article, How Cold War Era Dreams of Weather Modification Are Coming True in Colorado Ski Country. All this is is that a company that shoots silver iodide into the air convinces someone that they're going to make more snow for them. That's it. Yes, it's a scam. Evacuation orders lifted after Palisades fire leaves two injured and burns 40 acres in L.A. And you know what that means. It doesn't mean directed energy weapons. It means power blackouts likely again for hundreds of thousands of Californians this week. Still reeling from criticism for shutting off power to up to 2 million people this month to prevent fires, which lit anyway south of the area where the power was off. PG&E says it could have to do it all again. 500k PG&E customers may lose power as San Jose revolts with buyout proposal. Now, the San Jose government doesn't even care anymore about these outages. They're about to buy out PG&E. 
and stop the nonsense and maybe light more fires at the same time. Heavy snow moving in and staying put. As the farming season is all but over for the country, if you haven't harvested it, it will be unharvestable. Serious problems with Irish potato harvest due to bad weather may result in a national shortage. Wow, sounds like a potato famine. UK brace for the coldest winter in 50 years, says bookmakers, as odds are slashed. The temperatures will plummet as the mercury plunges across the country, with cold snaps everywhere from the north of Scotland to the Midlands. And not only that, the first snow will be hitting the ground in the UK sometime Saturday. Yes, in the southwestern portion now we can see quite a bit, up to 16 centimeters of snow coming into the picture. And let's just pause it. Let's get rid of that stupid pointer. Yes, let's get rid of that. And let's just move it into the first snow. First snow moving into the northern part sometime Friday evening through Saturday morning will be the first tippy touch of snow. Big up to the Queen Mother. Heavy snow moving into Norway. Nothing new there. But as of next Tuesday, October 29th and the beginning of November is going to be a November to remember as heavy snow moves into many of the regions of Europe falling as far south, yes, as Afrique. Snow in Afrique. Seismic update, no quakes of note. Very quiet on the U.S. front. And we're waiting for boom time to kick in in just another 24 to 36 hours. A look over at the Ulu neutron monitor. And what I have as a data set from 2015 to present, you can see... The exponential increase in cosmic rays. Yes. They've leveled off at a peak here, but they're going back up again into a new record range. Links will be below. And Shivalouche has been very active over the last 24 hours, erupting to over six miles here at 32,000 feet on the 21st of October, followed by another blast at 36,000 feet. Today, no one is reporting on this. Here we can see some of that ash plume and look at all this ash extending up to 80 kilometers from the blast zone. Worldwide volcano news update. No other volcanoes of note. Popo continues to puff and pass. Physicist, CO2 retains heat for only 0 0.0001 seconds. Warming is not possible. What you're going to see is a shortened version of Kenneth Richards' already succinct yet excellent article from October 18th, which he writes to Professor Nassif Hale's discovery that the rate of which CO2 molecules can retain heat is not at all, making global warming absolutely impossible based on their premise. Also, this 2019 ozone hole is the smallest on record since its discovery. Yes, the smallest, since you were warned it was all your fault. The ozone hole has shrunk to its smallest size on record, and it's not related to global warming. Hello! <coughs> this just in, catastrophic events carry forests of trees thousands of miles to a burial at sea. Hmm. Geology researchers are at USC Dorn's Life find for the first time evidence of fresh wood can move from two miles above sea level to the bottom of the ocean in merely seconds. Hmm, I wonder what would do that. Maybe we should ask Doug Vogt. What do you guys think? Magneto inertial fusion experiment nears completion. What could go wrong when you shoot anyway? Yes. Last seen in 1986, Haley's Comet will make its presence known this week with the Shooting Star Show. And an ion and plasma tail. Holy macaroni, it's electric. Will you be alive in 2061? If not, well, not many of us will be. Your only chance to see something of Haley's Comet comes in both early May and late October when the Earth moves through its debris field. <laughs> or stream of particles, the great comet deposited in the inner solar system in 1986. Yes, 
That's what's happening Monday, Tuesday as the Orionid meteor showers peak after midnight. I went out and I saw some amazing uh, plasma streaks that were moving west to east through my valley. So go out after midnight and look up tonight, please. Do it now. And we will leave you with just a few interesting things. Here is a patent applied by the Secretary of the Navy in 2016 uh, for an unconventional spacecraft propulsion system. This craft uses internal mass reduction devices comprising of an inner resonant cavity and an outer resonant cavity, which causes the resonant cavity to vibrate in an accelerated mode and create local polarized vacuum outside the resonant cavity wall. Now, what this results in is propulsion. So come read this. It's totally amazing. And absolutely no one has really picked up on it. And it's part of this ion drive that they're talking about. Where they're using vibration and vacuums and electric to create propulsion. I'm just delving into it. Tell me what you think. Now, Julian Assange is being poisoned, clearly. And this is an excellent account of what's happening to this man. His physical appearance was not shocking as his mental deterioration. When I asked to give his name and date of birth, Julian struggled visibly over seven seconds to recall both. And until yesterday, I and others have always been quite skeptical of those who claim that Julian's treatment amounted to torture. The UN special rapporteur on torture said, a skept and skeptical of those who suggest he may be subject to debilitating drug treatments. It's becoming clear that he is being drugged, and that's your future. That's how democracy works. They get what they want when they want it. Got it? Good. I hope you got something out of the video. If you speak out about truth, you will be tortured and drugged. Those are the facts. Be safe. We love you. They don't.